we need four eggs. Right? So I'm just going to break four eggs into this bowl. These are more than 700 gram eggs. Okay. Um, now, it's really important, uh, the, the quantities of things I'm going to give you also depends on, uh, sorry, that was a shot, depends on um, how much liquid you have. So, if you use bigger eggs, you can have big liquid, more liquid, and then as a consequence, uh, sometimes it means that uh, you might have to actually add more flour. Okay, to these four eggs, in a large bowl, right? The first thing I did this morning was, with Dominic's help, here are five uh, cups, um, you know, level cups of self-raising flour and two cups of plain flour, which I have mixed. And I'm going to be adding all of these to this mixture. Oh, as well as that, I have two cups of sugar. Dominic measured those for me. Um, I also have one cup of milk, which is here. And I also have a uh, one cup, I know it looks a little, but one cup of melted margarine. I'll measure that cup and then I probably put it in the microwave for me. Right? And uh, I also have a here, and this might look a little bit strange, but this is the zest of one lemon, the zest of half an orange and some orange juice. And Dominic wouldn't know why I put an orange juice in there. Well, because I want to give it a citrusy flavour. The orange wasn't the best orange there was, and I wanted to give it that extra kind of um, zing. So, just experimenting. Today, as a matter of fact, oh, the smell, the citrus smell is nice. Today, as a matter of fact, we're going to make three kinds of mustard out of it. We're going to make uh, one, one in pastel, we're going to make one lot of ba uh, basic pastry, but then we're going to have some of it, we're just going to make a plain. Some of it, we're going to add chocolate chips. And some of it we're going to make with the lemon icing. So we're kind of excited about that. Okay, so to this eggs, I'm going to add the zest and the juice, right? So in it goes. And I am also going to add the sugar. There we go. And I am going to mix that. Okay, I'm mixing that. Okay, I am also going to add to this the milk and the uh, margarine. Right now, I'm going to put margarine, otherwise, it won't come out nice and soft the way we want them to. Now, we're going to add the flour. Okay, I know what it looks like. Oh my god, you put all the flour in it all at once. Okay, I'm just going to mix it with the fork. It's going to take a little while for this for the flour to be absorbed, yeah. And people might uh, people have asked me like, why do you use all self-raising flour? Look, if you're going to use plain flour, you would have to probably put in at least one teaspoon of baking powder per cup of flour. Otherwise, if there's a little bit of room, so I'm going to need some room here because I'm going to turn this now onto a floured surface. Here we go. Okay. Floured surface. Okay. And I got to do this. Okay. And oh, it's incredibly soft and moist. It's very moist. Okay, I'm going to put in a little bit. I'm using self raising flour as the extra flour. Because if I use plain flour, that might flatten them. No, mum uses self-raising flour. So you do need, although you need five cups of self-raising flour, you probably need one of the extra cup or two for this part, which is the kneading bit. Okay, and here we go. This is fun. Okay, and so as you can see, from the way my hands are disappearing into this, it is very, very soft. And what I'm saying to you is, see how I'm turning it and kind of doing that little kneading action? I worked out if I do this about 10 or 12 times, yeah? So that I've done two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, look at that. What do you think? Beautiful. <laughs> oh, was it hard to find the chocolate chips? Not really. No. And I wonder why. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle these chocolate chips. Oh, gee, that's funny. A couple of chocolate chips escaped and funnily enough, Dominic ate them. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to do that and that. Okay. Hmm. Probably in my big oven, put a couple of trays in. But I just find that that actually impedes the cooking. So I'm going to just try and cook one tray at a time today. Mm -hmm. It might seem a waste of energy, but in actual fact, it ends up taking longer. So these should only take, all right, about, um, they should only take about 10, 15 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes to cook. But when I put two trays in, in my big oven, what ends up happening is that it ends up taking, um, uh, longer. Okay, so here I've rolled them. Right now, I've said in my in my instructions that they should be about half a centimetre thick. Yeah. And now, for my secret, my secret invention, my secret thing, this is called a spur, and it's a spur, and it's a cook, cook, uh, cookie cutter. I bought this one in Italy. Okay, so what do I need to do? I need to cut some lines. Here we go, that's one. Yeah. There you go, like this. Oops, okay. Uh, I've got, I've got um, chocolate chips stopping me. Okay, that's the one. One downside of the chocolate chips is that when you try to use the spit on, that it won't let you run. There we go. Now, what we're going to do, once you've done that, oh, that's stuck, stuck to the bottom, get it, be careful of that, is on an angle, go like this, and like this, oh, that's a chocolate chip, hmm. okay, we're just going to put that there, uh, on there, so these are, this is the first time we've done chocolate chip, so we've got this no an idea, experiment. they could be good, they could be bad, enough. yeah, we have no idea whether they're going to be good or they're going to be bad. We kind of feel that they're going to be good. See how successful we were. Okay. All right? We'll be back. Okay, so I've rolled out another lot. Okay, and now I've got these strips, which I, you know, this is what I say in my, in my instructions. I say divide, cut with the spit owner, the dough cutter, cut each sheet uh, in strips, right? Okay, between three, you know, three and four centimetres wide, and then at a cross angle like this, and that way you end up with a kind of a diamond shape, right? If you do it like that, see how they shape like diamonds now? Yeah? Okay, you go like that, and like that. Now, it's really important, you see how it's sticky a little bit, just put in a bit of flour and close together. Uh, a bit like scones, but not like hovering together like scones. But guys, look at what's going on there. These are a little big, but I had to cut around those blessed um, chocolate, chip. chocolate chips. So, but they look fabulous. And these took about 16 minutes to cook because I think I made them too big. Hey, it is now 9.25 and we started this adventure at 8 o'clock this morning. At 9.25, we've got these lovely ones cooling with lemon and orange icing on top and Dominic is dying to try them, but I'm making him wait until the icing is actually dry. We have a box of chocolate chip cookies, which Dominic is going to take and they're going to disappear. We've got a basket full of plain ones and some chocolate that Dominic has actually decided to leave for me. Mm -hmm. There's about four. He easily would have made a hundred pastarelle. Okay, easily would have made a hundred pastarelle. Now, what are you going to do? Keep an eye on all of this. I'll be back in a sec. But I have, I'm still going through my the, the little packet of these, which goes back forever. 
Here's my little bags. This is the best way. What, I'm, what I will do is after they've all cooled down, I'll take three, maybe four, put them, these are still hot. Here are some, yeah. I put three, okay, in here. Then what I do is I will da 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 and I'll tie them up, okay? And what I do, don't they follow me, is I put them in the freezer. Now, I really just zip it in the microwave, defrost for about 30 seconds and then you've got it. So, um, make it in the morning and then eat it throughout the day. Usually it disappears throughout the day anyway. But if I make extra, I like to put it in the freezer. Thanks, ciao.